open the, your Bibles to uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. And again, I would remind you, uh, if you have an offering or tithe or a love offering, any kind of donation of any type that you'd like to send in to the church uh, to help support the church, you can send it in to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. And if you have uh, anything you want to go especially for the ladies club or uh, missions or uh, evangelist or anything, you can earmark it for that. Just put on your check or, or within a separate uh, envelope would be even better probably and mark it specifically for that. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, remember of course in prayer. We're going to go to prayer here but let's remember in prayer the old folks in the uh, in the church and particularly Lucy May. She is uh, in the hospital has had a stroke and uh, uh, she has some blockages. They were going to just try to put her on, uh, uh, try to put a stent in, but uh, she had, uh, the blockages were too bad, so they had to uh, put her on some blood thinners that are gonna come back in a while and try to, uh, uh, try to, to do something uh, more with her in a, in a few weeks, I think. So remember her in prayer. Remember Nancy Combs and all of, all of the uh, widows and the uh, widows in the church, the old folks in the church, those that are sick and in need, uh, just ask God's blessing on them. But let's go ahead and open it in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this uh, evening. Lord, we thank you this, uh, for this day and, and all that you've given us. We just ask you to bless us, be with us, guide us, and direct us in all things, Lord, and, and just lead us. Just uh, anoint the, the service here today, Lord, and bless the message. Don't let your word go out, out void, Lord. We know you said you wouldn't, and we believe every word that you say. Lord, we believe every word that's in the Bible, and we thank you for it. We ask that you bless all those uh, uh, during this uh, time of, of, of the virus, Lord. Bless those that have the virus and heal them, those that have lost loved ones due to it, or for whatever reason, Lord, bless them with comfort and be with them in all things, and we'll give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor for all things. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, and amen. Amen. And I said, turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter uh, 5, verse 12, and uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, sin, uh, and, and particularly sins that caused others damage or, or, even, or even death, maybe. And, uh, and what, what I want to really get, get into about this is how our sins, the sins that we have, do affect other people. And they can cause damage to them, and sometimes even death, great damage sometimes, and even death to some of them. And we know that if a father and a mother, uh, if they have an addiction of some uh, type or whatever, we know that their actions, their sins can have uh, a bad effect. Alcoholism or drug use or anything like that can have a catastrophic effect on children and even on their marriage relationships. An, an addicted person... Uh, their sins can cause them to, to harm others, can do, do harm to others just to try to feed that addiction. We know that many people are killed on the roads, uh, roadways every day uh, because of impaired drivers. And we know a drug addict or an alcoholic or even a gambler, they'll say this, that uh, I'm not hurting anybody but myself. But you know, that's not true. That's never the truth. Uh, they cause great worry. They cause great grief and damage to their families. Now, when God created man, he created a paradise for them, and a garden of Eden for them to live in, and, and it was a beautiful garden that they were to live in, and they were just to keep the garden, that's all they had to do, they had a, there was an abundance of food, uh, and when God placed man in that garden, when he put him there, he told him, he said, of every tree in the, in the, of the garden thou mayest freely eat. God also said this in Genesis 1, 29, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in, in the which is the fruit of the tree bearing seed to you it shall be for me. But you know, it wasn't long, even in this perfect situation, the perfect setup, but it wasn't long before man fell from the grace of God, and it was by his disobedience, of course, by his sins. And and along with him, all men, all men then were cursed to struggle, to work by the sweat of their brow, and then to eventually die. We all have to die then. In Romans, in Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Whereas, as by one man sin entered, in, entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So, now before we, we come down too hard, I want you to go ahead and turn over to... Uh, uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. 1 first, first John, first John chapter 3, verse 12. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Before we come down too hard on Adam, 
Would we have been able to resist temptation and have done any better than he did? Because are, are we without sin? If the first man had been Randall, if the first man had been Bill or Tom or Harry, the, the result would have still been the same because we're all sinners. We're all sinners. Adam and even though they had sinned, God still blessed them. He blessed them with children. He blessed them with two boys in the beginning there with Cain and Abel. And when Cain and Abel come to offer their sacrifices, their offerings to God, he accepted Abel's, but he rejected Cain's offering. And, and so instead of trying to do better, uh, Cain was mad. He got really mad about it. Genesis 4, 6 says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is, there, is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin life at the door. And unto thee shall it be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So we know that Cain uh, rose up and he slew his brother. We know that. So Cain's sin caused great damage and even death to his brother. In 1 John 3, 12, 1 John 3, 12, it says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Go ahead and turn over your Bibles to Exodus chapter 10, verse uh, 7. Exodus 10, 7. Exodus 10, 7. When Joseph's brothers, speaking of brothers, had a great sin of jealousy and envy toward their uh, brother Joseph, they made that sin even worse. Uh, it, it, by selling their brother uh, into slavery uh, to Egypt. Now their sin caused great distress for Joseph and they put him, and this was just a teenage boy, they put him into great danger and it, it was many precarious situations including prison for several years. But God blessed Joseph while he was there, and he made him second in command in Egypt. And when his brothers came to Egypt and Joseph revealed himself to them, they were very concerned, of course. They were concerned because they, they were afraid that Joseph would, would try to exact uh, revenge on them. Uh, but he told them this. He said, but as far as you, you thought evil against me. But God made it unto good to, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. The sin of Joseph's brother could have, have, called, have been dev devastating to Joseph if God had not been there to intervene. But after the death of Joseph, the Jews were made slaves in Egypt. And they were there for over 400 years as slaves. And God raised up Moses to lead the children of uh, Israel out of Egypt. But Pharaoh... When Moses went and said, let my people go, Pharaoh refused to let the people go. And because of the hardness of Pharaoh's heart, God sent ten plagues on Egypt. First it was he changed the water to blood. Uh, then, he, uh, then he sent a plague of frogs and a plague of lice, a plague of uh, flies. And then he sent pestilence that killed a lot of their, of their livestock. He sent boils that were on man and beast, the Bible says. He sent hail that was mingled with fire. He sent locusts that killed most of the crops. And then he said three days of thick darkness, even darkness that could be felt. But before God sent that last plague, before he sent the last one, that last one was to kill the firstborn of the Egyptians. But before he sent that, the advisors, the people around him, the servants to Pharaoh, tried to get him to understand that his sin of stubbornness and hard hardness had caused great, great damage already and destroyed Egypt. In Exodus chapter 10, verse 7, it says, And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? So Pharaoh's sin caused the destruction of Egypt, the loss of livestock, and then ultimately the lives of the firstborn children in Egypt, all of them, including his own son. Turn over to 1 Kings First Kings uh, chapter 13, verse 18. First Kings uh, 13, 18. First Kings 13, 18. Israel and Judah at some point split into two different kingdoms. Israel, the northern kingdom, and Judah, the southern kingdom. Judah in the south continued to worship God in Jerusalem in the temple. 
But Jeroboam, king of uh, Israel, the northern kingdom, he made two golden calves so that they wouldn't go down to Jerusalem, so that they wouldn't be tempted to join up with Judah. He made two golden calves that so they would worship that they would stay in uh, that they would stay in Israel. Now, in First Kings thirteen, God sends a prophet, uh, known only in the Bible as the man of God, from Judah to Bethel in Israel to rebuke. Uh, Jeroboam and Israel and to warn them that God was going to punish them for their idol worship. Now Jeroboam, the, the king of Israel, he points at the man of God. He points at the man of God and he tells the people there to hold, uh, to lay hold on him. But while he's pointing with that hand he's pointing with, uh, God uh, uh, dries up. The Bible says that Jeroboam's hand dried up so that he could not even withdraw it. He couldn't, he couldn't even bring it in, couldn't bring it back to himself. And he asked the man of God then to entreat the Lord for him. He asked him to beg the Lord for him that he would uh, fix his hand and he would heal his hand. And God does heal his hand. He does. And then Jeroboam asked the man of, of God to come back with him to his home and to eat and drink with him says, so that he can reward him. But the man of God says that God told him not to eat or drink in Bethel, in that place, he said, and, not, and to even go back a different route, go back a different way home than he'd even come. Now there was a prophet that said that lived in Bethel, and, and that uh, and he had heard from his sons that, that the man of God had come there, and the message that he had brought, and the way that he went, and everything, and, the, and then he got on his uh, uh, ass, and he went, and he got the man asking the man to come home with him. And in First Kings thirteen eighteen, First Kings thirteen eighteen, it says, and he said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the sword of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, saying. Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So, so he had lied to him. He had lied to him. He told him a lie. He didn't tell him the truth at all. And uh, we're going on with this story then in 1 Kings 13, 19. It says, and he, took, uh, and he went back home with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Forasmuch as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back, and hast eaten bread, and drunk water in the place, of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no more, and drink no water. Eat no bread, rather, and drink no water. Thou carcass shall not come unto the, unto the sepulchre of their fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought him back. The prophet he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the car carcass, and they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord hath delivered him uh, in, under the lion which hath torn and which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake before him. And he spake to his son, saying, Saddle me the ass, and they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass, cast it away, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he laid his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass, after he had buried him, that he, that he spake to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulcher wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. So that prophet's sin, that prophet's sin had caused the man of God's death but the man of God had some part in it himself because, uh, because God had told him not to eat or drink there in Bethel, and he had listened to that man instead of listening to what God had said. The Bible tells us that we ought to obey God rather than man. 
Now, sometimes, as I said, other sins uh, affect us, but it's our own sins. It's our own sins that always, always re re bring rebuke and chastisement upon us. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel 31, 6. 1 Samuel 31, 6. Now, Israel had wanted a king, so they said they wanted to be like the nations that were around him. But this was in itself, of course, uh, a sin. Because it showed disbelief and it, and it showed mistrust in God. Now God also didn't want them to have a king because he didn't want them to be like the, the nations around him. He wanted to, them to be an holy nation. But they persisted and they kept on and kept on. And God told Samuel to anoint them a king. And Samuel found Saul, uh, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, to be king. And he was... He was head and shoulders, the Bible says, head and shoulders above the other Jews, and they were impressed with his size. They were impressed with it. But Saul uh, was disobedient. Saul had his own ideas of how things should be done. Now, God, one of the first things that God told Saul to do was to go and to utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites. Completely destroy them, get rid of them completely. And Saul, Saul went and he killed all the Amalekites except their king Agag. Uh, which he brought back with him. And he was also to kill all the animals. And he killed all the animals except he brought back the best of the sheep and the best of the cattle. And he, and he was to offer, he said it was to offer burnt sacrifices. Now when Saul met, when Saul came out, he heard about that, that, that Saul was back. God had told him that Saul was back. And he went out to meet Saul. And when he came to meet him, returning from the battle, he said, uh, Saul said this to Samuel. Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel then says, What meaneth then the bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and the lowing of the oxen that I hear? And Saul then says, They have, they, and then he changes it to they, meaning the, the people that were with him, they have spared the best to sacrifice. And he says, We, including myself and this one, have destroyed the rest. Samuel tells him, uh, he goes and consults with God, he comes back and he tells him that, uh, it's, that God said it's better to obey than to sacrifice. And Samuel tells Saul that uh, because he has rejected the word of the Lord, that the Lord has also rejected him from being king. Now God then has Samuel to go to Jesse's house and to anoint uh, David as the king. But it's many, many years before David takes the kingdom, before he sits on the throne. And when Saul does find out that David, or he realizes that David, uh, that God has chosen David as king, as a new king, he tries several different times to kill David. And, and Saul, in his fury at one, at one particular point, uh, for, for on the missing opportunity to, to kill David, uh, because of a priest, he sends a, a, a guy named Doeg the uh, Edomite to kill 85 of the priests and then to go into the city of Nob and to kill all the men, all the women, and even all the animals in that city. Now, that's, it's, it's kind of uh, ironic because that's what God told uh, him to go and do in, to the Amalekites. Now, if he had done that with the Amalekites, he wouldn't have been rejected. But now he's even made it even worse by going and killing uh, the priests of God and, and all their families. And now to add to his many sins, add to his many sins, Saul goes to a witch uh, to, to raise uh, Samuel's spirit from the dead to give him advice because God wouldn't answer him. He wanted to give him advice about a battle that he was going against the, uh, the uh, Philistines. But at this point, God had had enough of Saul. Uh, and, and Israel is defeated by the Philistines and Saul and his sons are all killed in the battle. In 1 Samuel 31, 6, 1 Samuel 31, 6 says, So Saul died and his three sons, and his armor bearer, and all of his men that same day together. So Saul's defeated and he's killed. They're all killed in that battle. And uh, go ahead and turn over your Bible to Exodus 32, Exodus 32, 26. So Saul, because of his sin, because of his sin, he lost a kingdom. But he also caused the death of, and he lost his life as well, but he also called the death of his three sons, including Jonathan, who was a good man. The Bible always, always says good things about Jonathan. But he was a good man, and he would have been the king after Saul. But because of his sin, he lost it all. Now when Moses, when Moses uh, was leading the children of Israel through the wilderness uh, to the land of their inheritance, God called him up onto the Mount Sinai, and to give him the Ten Commandments to be written on the two tables of stone. 
And Moses was up in the mountain a long time. He was up in there 40 days and 40 nights. And the people of Israel, uh, they didn't know what happened to him. They thought he must have died or, or whatever or something happened to him. He wasn't coming back. So they told Aaron to make them an idol to worship. And, idol, and Aaron told them to break off their earrings off from their children and their wives and to bring it to them and to give it to him. And the Bible says and he received them at his hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And, uh, and they said, I guess the people said, these, those, or rather these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now, of course, God told Moses to get back because these people have quickly uh, departed from, from following him from the word of God. And when Moses confronted Aaron about what he had done, the Bible says, and Aaron, and rather, and Moses said unto Aaron, what did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? In Exodus 32, 26, Exodus 32, 26, it says, Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. So that was a lot of people. Because Aaron and Aaron and Ur had been left in charge but because Aaron sinned while he was there, because he couldn't keep the people from sinning while uh, Moses was on the mount and didn't stop the people from sinning, about 3,000 people, 3,000 men rather, lost their lives. But Aaron was spared on this day. Now we saw that in some of these instances, uh, seemingly innocent people uh, were damaged, were damaged uh, or, or they were killed because of someone else's sin. But you know what, really, none of us are innocent. We're not innocent. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10 says, and says, As it is written, There is none righteous. No, not one. Now, we're all guilty. We're all guilty. And, and, and you know, we just can't understand, though, a lot of times. Just as, as King David could, we can understand why good people suffer and die, and then why some evil and wicked people prosper and live. But when I, when I began this sermon, I had told you to turn to Romans 5, 12. It says, whereas by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So that was Adam, of course, he was talking about. And Adam sinned, and all men then had to die because of that. But everybody has their own sin, though. And then uh, Romans 5, 19 says, for as by one man's disobedience, was Adam, of course, uh, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall uh, many be made righteous. And that's what Jesus Christ, of course. Of course, turn over your Bibles to uh, Romans. Turn back over to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9. And uh, our sins do have consequences. They do. Not only for us, but sometimes for others around us, for our loved ones, for our families. And we never know what the morrow will bring. We don't know what it holds for us. We don't know that. The Bible says that our lives are but a vapor. I mean, they're here for a little while and then they're gone. So what we need to do is always be ready. Always be ready to go by making our calling and election sure, as Peter said. And that is by believing the gospel, by believing the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you're not saved, then you need to get saved. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, is the gospel. It tells you the gospel. It tells you how to get saved and how simple and easy it is to, to get saved. In Romans chapter 10 verse 9 it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Uh, verse 10 13 says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, God has made it easy for us to be saved. He hasn't made us to do anything really hard and really difficult because it's, it's not His will that any would perish. He made it easy because He wants everybody to be saved. He wants everybody to go to heaven, but He understands that everybody won't. He understands that there will only be a few that goes there, and that's only because they don't understand. They try to work their way into heaven, and God has said over and over and over that 
We are not good enough to get into heaven on our own. We have to take on the righteousness of Christ. That's the only way that we can get uh, into heaven. The only way that we ever will. He's the only way into heaven. He is the truth, the way, and the life. And he's the only way. Thank you for your attention. And uh, we'll go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message. We thank you for the Bible. We thank you for the words in it. We thank you for all the truth that it contains, Lord. We thank you for everything that you've given us, all the perfect gifts, all the many blessings you bestow upon us, Lord. We ask that you would just continue to bless us and keep us safe in this time. Bless us and be with us. Get us back all together again pretty soon, Lord, if it be your will. We just ask in all things that your perfect will be done, and we'll thank you for it. Again, we ask this all in Jesus Christ's name, and amen.